Hello, everyone. How are we doing today? I am super grateful that you guys came to this talk. We have one hour together, and we are going to jam. Who here wants to make some more money? Yeah. Let me hear you if you want to make some more money. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. So really quickly, I, I just want to start by saying, first of all, thank you so much to the, to the organization for having me. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I've spoken to Dry Cleaning Association, the DLI, for over the last couple of years about se six or seven times. And before I kind of jump into who I am and what I do, I want to basically just say that I have immense respect for every single person sitting in this audience today because I know how difficult it is to run a business. So I want to start by just literally acknowledging yourselves by giving yourselves a round of applause for being here and for being in successful business today. So round of applause. I, um, I live in New York City. Anybody here from New York? All right, we got some, some hands. Usually it's like, anybody here from New York? And you guys are like, woo! Um, and and I, I run an, a branding and marketing agency in New York City, and we're between New York and Columbia, South America. Uh, it's a completely 100% bilingual agency, and we help brands of all sizes tell stories that sell. Really, if you look up here, that's really what I'm, what I'm, what I'm all about. And I've built my career on storytelling, and I built my career on branding and on, on marketing. Uh, I, I went to law school in New York. I went to work for Mike Bloomberg after law school. Bloomberg was the mayor of New York City. I helped run his re-election campaign in northern Manhattan. I thought I wanted to be the mayor. That was my way of figuring out how to become the mayor of New York City. I worked for him for almost three years, loved everything about working for him, quickly realized I did not want to be the mayor of New York. Uh, and after about three years working in the administration, doing speech writing, messaging, preparation for congressional testimony, I, I realized that no matter what we want to do, whether it's re-elect a mayor, whether it's sell more product, whether it's convince someone to buy our services, what do we have to do? We have to be able to tell a story. And we have to build a brand that people trust and people love and people want to buy from. And so when I worked for Bloomberg for three years, I decided, you know what, I have a lot of my own messages that I want to share. I have a lot of my own skills that I want to share. So I moved to Silicon Valley, California, and I started working with big brands, big tech brands, specifically executives in, in tech brands like LinkedIn, like Twitter, uh, Facebook, Credit Karma, Credit Suisse, a bunch of big brands, and I helped them basically figure out how do we tell the story of what we're up to. And what I realized was everybody basically has something in them that they want to get out. And I realized that big, these big tech brands, they were fun to work with, and that was cool. But what I really also saw was a lot of small businesses were completely lost in how to tell a story on social media. And so I started working with local businesses in New York City, local businesses across the US. And what I realized was that the, the local, small, medium-sized businesses were actually the most fun to work with because the stories were so real and so personal. A lot of family businesses, a lot of second, third generation, a lot of stories that like literally we started our dental practice in the basement of our studio apartment and now we have different locations across Queens. And yet I would look at their social media and that message wouldn't be anywhere. And so I started to really focus in on not just big brands but also small businesses and entrepreneurs to help them tell stories that sell. So that's what we do today. I've given a couple of TEDx talks, I've written and appeared in magazines like Forbes, Inc. Magazine, Huffington Post Entrepreneur, and the reason that I tell you all of that is not to brag about my success, it's to tell you that I stand in front of you today as a speaker who is actually an entrepreneur. And I think that that's really an important distinction because there are a lot of speakers, and I'm sure that you've all heard them, that are giving you tips and strategies and the, you know, the trends of today but then you dig deep and you ask them about their experience and they've actually never done any of the things that they're telling you to try. They've read an article in Forbes and then they start telling you that you should do it and it's just not in good integrity. What I'm most excited about today is that I think that there will be one person in this audience that will do what I say and your business will completely explode. And it won't happen tomorrow and it might not happen in six months or 12 months, but eventually, and I receive these comments all the time, I'm very active on social media, the advice that I'm giving you is not only working for me, but is working for clients of all sizes, including 
dry cleaners, in, including laundry, including your industry. So what I'm really hoping for today is that one person in this audience takes what I say and implements it. It will take work, it will take energy. I'm not standing up here in front of you saying I have a quick fix for your business. I'm just saying that I am 100% on top of modern day marketing and modern day branding for businesses of all sizes. And what I'm teaching and what I am doing and what I'm charging clients for works. So here's how I'd like to do this. I wanna talk for 30 minutes about kind of the state of the union, about how I see marketing and branding today and the opportunities that it, that it represents for all of you. How many people in here have less than five employees? Raise your hand. Cool, like about a quarter of you. How many have between five to 50 employees? More than 50? More than 100? More than 500? Wow, how many employees do you have, sir? 600, cool. So. This, this is a good, a good mix. What I'm going to tell you will work for all of you, okay? So let's just get started. Um, I wanna talk for 30 minutes, and then what I wanna do is I wanna take the last 15, 20 for questions. This is really a time for you to be selfish and to get up on the microphone and be like, Brian, here's my direct question. I normally get two or three or four hours to talk about these things, so I'm gonna speak very fast, and I hope that I am concrete and practical for you, but if there's anything that's not clear, please jump up on that microphone and ask me, how do I run a Facebook ad? I mean, it can be anything that is on your mind. Sound good? All right, so how many people in here, and, and be honest, are happy with how the business is going for you? Wow, a lot of ambitious people in here, like 13 people raised their hand. I love that. How many people want to do better? All of you. How many people right now are using social media for their business? Raise your hand. And keep your hands up, please. How many of you that have your hands in the air are happy with how social media is going for you? And the hands go tumbling down. There's literally like three left in the air. And that's a good sign for me because I'm excited to share things with you because that's a normal response. And what the normal response is, is you're gonna tell me, Brian, social media doesn't work. That's not true. Social media definitely works. You're not doing it right. And that's what we're here for today, right? Let's start, I'm gonna get into three main points that I want you to write down. Point, and I don't, have, I don't do slides, I don't do PowerPoints, I just wanna really be present with you guys, but I'll, I'll break it down practically. Point number one, branding versus sales. We have to understand the difference between branding versus sales. We have to understand this, this is a big deal. Most people do not understand that branding and sales are two very different things. When you hear the word branding, just scream out at me. What do you think of? What are some words that you associate with branding? Just scream it out. Image, Image. logo, story. story, what was it? Tagline. Font, tagline, good. When I hear branding, the first word that comes to my mind is trust and confidence, right? You know, you know the old saying, right? People buy from people that they Trust, but that's only half true. People buy from people that they know, that they remember, and that they trust. I have plenty of people that I trust in my life. I don't buy anything from any of them because I'm not thinking about them. When we're thinking about branding versus sales, what most people do on their social media is they are literally putting sale, two for one, 50% off, Mother's Day, Father's Day, sale, 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 sale. Right? How many of you guys do that? A lot. Sale, 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 and then they'll offer a piece of content that will be useful. What I want to urge all of you to think about is that when I, when I say the word branding, it has nothing to do with sales. It is confidence, right? It is knowledge, and it is reputation. What do people say about you when you're not around? What do people say about your dry cleaners, about your establishment, about your small business when you're not around? That's your brand. That has nothing to do with sales. The sales will follow the brand. Now, it's the nine to one thing that I'm seeing on social media from everybody, and they come to me and they say, why is my social media not working? And I'm saying, because you're adding zero value. You're thinking that branding and sales are the same thing, and you think that just because you post something on your social media offering a two for one discount, then you are building brand, you are not. Does that make sense? So how do we, do, so how, okay Brian, that makes sense. What do I do about it, right? Let's jump into point number two. And point number two and point number three are gonna be really the, the, where we're gonna spend most amount of time. Point number two is the following. I want you to think about the fact that 
Every single one of you, every single one of you in this room right now has a massive opportunity to completely dominate your city. But you have to think about yourself as a media company, not as a laundromat, not as a dry cleaning establishment, not as whatever it is that you say that you are, right? So if I'm Brian's Cleaners, most of this room is probably thinking about Brian's Cleaners as Brian's Cleaners. We offer a service and all of our digital content has to be around that service. That is not true. It couldn't be further from the truth. You have to think of yourself as a media company. Why do you go to the websites that you visit? They're not, oh, why, do you, why does somebody in here, how many people in here own a pair of Nike shoes? Almost everybody. Why did you buy Nike shoes? Did, did Nike send you a, a thing in the mail saying that our shoes are now $99.99? Did you get spammed in your inbox that, no you did not. What did Nike do? Nike built content around one slogan, one line, and what was that line? Just do it. Didn't say just buy from us. Didn't say just give us your money. It said just do it. And they would make these highly motivational commercials of people training and sweating and being fit and being their best selves. And when you walk into Foot Locker or Foot Action or Shoe Carnival or wherever it is that you buy your shoes, you're thinking what? Just do it. And you buy a Nike instead of a New Balance because Nike did something for you. They started to build trust. It's the best example of a brand. How does that convert to being a media company? Every single one of you in this room, if you live in a city from 5,000 to, to 5 million people have an opportunity to turn yourself into a media company. And a media company simply means the place that people go to get information. How does that look for you? I wanna make this really, really practical for you guys. If I'm Brian's Cleaners and I live in Indianapolis, Indiana, population of 800,000 people, right? I'm picking a city that's kind of mid-sized, so you guys can all apply it your own way. If I'm a media company, what do I do? I need to create content that does what? That adds value. I need to start thinking about myself as a media company. I need to start thinking out of the box. I need to start making content that's not two-for-one jacket cleanings. How do I do that? Well, what do people care about when they move into a neighborhood? How many people have physical locations in a neighborhood right now? Almost everyone. What do people care about? They care about the schools. They care about safety. They care about nightlife, restaurants, entertainment. They care about the politics. They care about green space. They care about the rent. They care about safety for their kids. So. Let's just take a step back. Yes, we can easily create a piece of content that says Brian Cleaners in Indianapolis is now open for business. Come in today for two for one. That will work a little bit. And maybe some of you are doing that now and maybe some of you are having success. What's better than that? Brian's Cleaners is gonna start a digital show. Brian's Cleaners is gonna start, start a program called Local Heroes, brought to you by Brian's Cleaners. You guys can literally steal these ideas, and I hope you do, because they will work. Local heroes. What does Brian do? Brian is the owner of Brian's Cleaners. I am now going to go around, and I'm going to do a TV show filmed on my cell phone for free, where I'm going to interview the local leaders of my community. I'm going to interview the mayor. I'm gonna interview the superintendent of the school. I'm gonna interview the chef at the new hot restaurant in town. I'm gonna interview the, head, the chief of police. And you guys might ask, but why would they wanna to talk to me? That's the question I always get when I give these talks. Why would they wanna to talk to me? Because you word it in a way that makes them look good. Everybody loves themselves, right? Everybody wants to look good. So you say, hey, I'm starting this show. I think it's gonna be wildly famous in Indianapolis and you are my first guest because you, I have identified you as a leader in our community that people need to know about. It's not about Brian's Cleaners. It's about Ed the Mayor. And now I'm talking to Ed the Mayor, and I'm doing an interview show that's between 10 and 15 minutes, or Ed the City Councilman, or Ed the Local Politician. It doesn't matter. Whatever neighborhood you live in, whoever Ed is for you, that's who you go interview. Guess what happens? A couple things happens. Number one, Ed is happy with you. Ed now gives you his business. But the second thing happens is you now put that piece of content up on YouTube and guess what you do? You send that link to Ed. And guess what Ed does? Shares it. 
And now you have tons of free publicity from Ed. And what are we doing? We're building confidence. If Ed sits down with Brian for a show, Ed trusts Brian. I trust Ed. I trust Brian. That's just deductive logic, right? That's how it works. Now all of a sudden we're like, wow, cool. Ed is with Brian. I like Ed. I'm going to go to Brian. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm also going to share it because I like Ed and now I like Brian. And now with one 12 minute video, you have not only added value to your community, and by the way, I would probably talk with Ed about a, something that, that people in your community care about. I would probably talk to Ed, the politician, about what are his plans for healthcare in 2021. People care about healthcare. The people that bring you their clothes, the people that bring you their business, care about all the same things that we all care about. The problem is none of us are taking the time or energy to actually talk about these things because we're so busy selling the two for one deal that everyone else in town is also selling. But no one else in town is taking the time to become the media company. Pretty cool, right? What do we do next? Because if it's a media company, what does that mean? A media company simply means that I'm not gonna just stop with one video of Ed. And this is where most people stop. Most people say, cool, I did an interview with Ed. He talked about healthcare in 2021. He talked about crime rate reduction in, in Indianapolis in 2019. I'm good, I'm gonna put it on YouTube. I did my job. Here's the problem with that. You might be on YouTube and you're on Instagram and you're on LinkedIn and you prefer to listen to a podcast and you want to read a LinkedIn and you want to read a Medium article. So if I have not taken that content and put it in every different place, I'm only reaching one of seven that I could reach. And that's the opposite of a media company. That's a single distribution platform. So how do I do that? Let me get this, let me get this to you as practically as I can. Every, every single one of you needs to write this, this, this down. My principal pillar of content will be X. I would urge you all to do video. Unless you are horrified of video, video is the best. The other ways that you can submit content are written pieces of content and audio pieces of content. Both of them also work, and I'm gonna show you how you, you can do both of them also, but we're talking about the top of the funnel. We're talking about the first thing that you guys do. We're talking about the principal pillar of content. Let me show you how this works for me. Brian now does a 12 minute interview with the mayor. Brian uploads that to his YouTube show, which is called Brian's Cleaners, or Local Heroes, brought to you by Brian's Cleaners. Brian's Cleaners is the sponsor of the show. You guys see how cool this is? You're the sponsor, you don't pay any money. You just get your name out there. It's your show. It's cool, right? You're the sponsor. Now, I have that piece of content up on YouTube. What do I do with it? I want to become a media company. I need to put that everywhere. So I'm going to take that same video that I shot with Mayor Ed, and I'm going to upload it to my, pers to my professional Facebook page. How many people in here have a professional public figure Facebook page? Raise your hand. Hi. Less than half. Way less than half. Guys, if you don't have a professional public figure Facebook page, please tonight, before you go out for your hurricanes, please download it. And I'm gonna explain why in part three, but it is a complete game changer for your business. If you do not have that, you're missing a massive opportunity, okay? I'm gonna upload that. Now, write this down, very, very important. You do not wanna put the link of your YouTube video on Facebook. So, hey everyone, check out my, my interview with Mayor Ed. Link to YouTube. YouTube, and this is something that you, you wouldn't know unless you're really in it. YouTube and Facebook are competitors. Facebook will make sure that absolutely no one sees that YouTube link. Huge, huge thing. This took me years to figure out. I was like, why do I get such great engagement with 90% of my posts? Every time I put up a video on YouTube, I get one like. And I put all my energy and all my time into that one YouTube video and no one's watching it. I don't like that. Instead, you upload that raw video, that raw video that you took on your phone and you upload that to Facebook. And that will get much, much, much more reach than if you put a YouTube link, important, all right? So now where am I? I'm in Facebook and I'm on YouTube. Now I'm gonna take the best minute, and here's the cool thing about doing a 12 minute interview. You can literally use that 12 minute interview and you can cut little slices of it. So if the mayor says the city of Indianapolis is now the safest place to live in America, 
and I will make, do everything that I can to make sure that I keep this city safe, you can literally cut that 15 second clip and put it up as a meme video on your Instagram. A meme video is just a video on your Instagram that has a title and has a clip of your principal pillar of content. And you, you put across the thing why Indianapolis rocks, why it's great to live in Indianapolis. Okay, and we're gonna get to the distribution strategy of that in part three, but that's really, really important. So now we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we're on Instagram. Now what do we do with it? We put the same video on LinkedIn. Video content right now on LinkedIn has insane organic reach. It's the best platform right now to put content up if you have absolutely no money for marketing. Every one of you that comes to me and says, I have zero marketing budget, put stuff up on LinkedIn. It will get organic reach. LinkedIn is really fighting to become a competitor with Facebook and, and, and Instagram. And so they're doing all they can to make sure your stuff gets seen, okay? Then what I do is I rip the audio, I take the audio of that video and I upload it as a podcast. I upload it as a podcast. Why a podcast? A podcast is, how many people in here listen to podcasts? Just raise your hand. Yeah, a, a lot. If you think about the difference between, and, and why a podcast, every single one of you out here needs to start a podcast, and here's why. I can't watch your video and shower. I can't watch your video and drive my daughter to school. I can't watch your video and cook dinner. I mean, maybe I could, but that's a little bit challenging. I can listen to, to your podcast. I can listen to you and drive. I can listen to you and shower. I can listen to you and cook. It's passive consumption. Right now, on our smartphones, people, like 25 to 30% of our Google searches are on microphone searches. Hey, wh what's the best restaurant in New Orleans? We're not, even type we're not even typing on our cell phones anymore. And soon, this will convert to podcast listening, but even bigger than that, I'm gonna go, just for really quickly, I'm gonna go five, seven years ahead. This is what I think is really fascinating about marketing and about why brand is so important. What do you think is, you know, you guys have, anyone have Amazon Alexa or Google Home in your houses? Right now, you know, you say, hey, Alexa, put on uh, Perfect by Ed Sharon, and Alexa plays music, and that's cool. What's gonna happen in five years is you're gonna be sitting there and you're gonna say, Alexa, where's the closest dry cleaner? And one of two things is gonna happen. Either Alexa, either Amazon is gonna start having their own dry cleaning service distribution, and they're gonna send their dry cleaning service to your door, and in which case you're all screwed, which will happen eventually. Amazon will eventually gobble up the entire service industry. Or you do what I'm telling you today, and you start today to build your brand, and I'm not even thinking about where to drop my dry cleaning off, because I'm going to you. Because you've been bringing me interviews every week for the last three years, there is no way I'm giving my business to anybody else. Even if, and this is funny, how many, guys, how many of you in here have seen me speak before? Raise your hand. Thank you so much for coming back. I, I really appreciate that. Um, my dry cleaner messes my, my clothes up every, almost every time. Like, literally, uh, he is probably the worst dry cleaner in New York City. I have, I, I have been re received sheets that were white that are pink. My shirts have holes in them. But I keep going back to him because he's like 83 years old. I have no idea. He's from the islands. I, I walk in and say, hey, man, hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, I, I don't know what you're saying, you know? <laughs> but I love the guy. I, for whatever reason, he's built a brand of trust with me, and I keep going back. It's the same thing that's going to happen for all you guys. It's the same thing that's going to happen for all of us, right? So it's why brand is so important. It's why I'm so, so passionate about brand. All right, so anyway, podcast is important because you gotta start to build that audio connection with your audience to build the brand so that you don't get taken over by Amazon. Make sense? If you have time, and by the way, the next question that's gonna happen, that's gonna come is, but Brian, I don't have time to do all these things. And that's fine, you have two options. You either take a hard look at what you're doing with your day-to-day -day operations, and some of you actually legitimately do not have time, that's fine, you need to hire somebody that can do these things for you. Or you need to look at your time and you need to say, actually, I do have an extra 28 minutes a day that I didn't think I had because I'm watching YouTube videos, but I actually can do this. And you need to start doing it yourself. The problem with hiring someone to do social media for you 
is because unless you understand how social media works, you have no way of knowing if they're doing a good job. And they will rob you blind. Because just because they're 22 and use Instagram to hook up, doesn't mean they know how to sell your service on Instagram. You need the second. You don't need anyone to hook up. You need someone that can actually run your Instagram or Facebook accounts. Make sense? So even if you just learn seven out of 10, you're still way better off than having no idea what you're doing and paying some 22 year old $14 an hour because they're probably also don't know what they're doing, but you have no way of knowing that. And you are completely powerless in this transaction. I don't like to be powerless. So I don't spend all of my time on social media because I'm running my business, but I know enough to know when that's not a good ad set and these numbers don't make sense. And you guys could all get there too. It's 10 to 20 hours over the next month of watching Facebook videos on YouTube. It's literally that simple. Cool? If you have time, then I would suggest taking those videos and those, written, uh, those, those oral podcasts and turning them into written pieces of content. And what does that mean? That means that the three lessons that I learned from Mayor Ed, and you put that up on LinkedIn, you put that up on your website, you put that up on your blog, you put that up on medium.com, and all of a sudden, thanks to your 12 minute interview with Mayor Ed, you are now in seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different places with that same piece of content. And that is how you become a media company. Pretty cool, huh? I, I, wanna, I wanna see what time it is. Okay, good, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk for Five more minutes about ads, about distribution, and then I want to get to questions because that's always the most valuable part of this. Now, we've worked hard. We have identified the difference between branding and sales. We've thought of ourselves as a media company. We've picked our principal piece of content. By the way, let's just say you don't want to do an interview show, which I think you all should because it's a great way to get community involvement. What are some other kinds of videos that you can use? You, you guys know your customers. What are the most common questions and answers that you receive? Do videos about that. I would actually start a video line, and I've suggested this in the past, and people laugh, and then somebody did it, and it worked, called Don't Hire Me. Don't bring me your clothes. And I would show people the three to eight most common things that happen to your clothes that make you bring them into me. Here's what's gonna happen. Don't, don't hire me. When you get a coffee stain on your white shirt before work, do this, and I would make a video that's 92 seconds long, and I would play it. Here's what's gonna happen. Brian's gonna watch it, and 18 seconds into it, I'm gonna be like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm going to Brian's cleaners, <laughs> right? Number one, you have built my trust <laughs> because you told me not to hire you. It's the opposite of what's happening right now. Everybody's telling you to hire them for everything. And number two, now you're in my head, and I'm taking it to you right now, right? Don't hire me. Uh, question and answer shows. T do an employee spotlight. For my man that has 600 employees, do every single week an employee spotlight. Here's uh, Jane. Jane comes from Charleston, West Virginia. Jane comes from a family that blah, 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 blah. And have Jane talk about her experience working with you. Have Jane talk about her hobbies, the things that she loves. Something you might not know about our employees. That could be a whole nother show. What you might not know about Brian Rashid's cleaning employees every day, every week, and it's so simple, guys. Literally, they just take out the phone. Everybody's complicating the fact that you think that the production level has to be stellar in order for people to buy from you. I have bought things from people where their production level is horrible, but I connect with the person. Don't let high quality production be the thing that doesn't let you start. I started my videos with a flip camera that was $300, and I invested literally all of the money that I had into a nice microphone, and that was six years ago. Now I have a full team, literally, that comes and travels with me. You gotta start somewhere, and it can be your phone. You can buy a $28 microphone on Amazon, use your phone, and start there. The important part is that people know who you are, okay? Now, we've, worried, we've done hard work, we get this content everywhere, what do we do next to make sure people see it? Right, something you guys are probably thinking, all right, cool, I have these videos, but what if nobody watches them? That's fine. There are two things right now that you should be really looking at with your advertising money. And whatever your budget is, you should put as much as you can, and I know that you probably do mailers and you probably do you know, physical pieces of content. Maybe you pay for SEO, and, and that's all fine. I'm not telling you to, ch if it works for you, and this is a really important thing, if it works for you, keep doing it. But then also add what I'm telling you, 
okay? So Facebook and Instagram targeted marketing is absolutely insane right now. The level that we can do, so here's, here, here are the two reasons why your Facebook campaigns are not working. Number one, you have not properly started your video with the, with the words that you should. In other words, if I, if I stand in front of you today as Brian's Cleaners and I say, hey everybody, my name's Brian and I wanna thank you for watching this video, it means a lot that I have your attention. You're done, you have checked out. You don't know who I am, you're already bored, 3.8 seconds later, you don't care what I have to say. It is not targeted. If on the other hand, I stand up and say, hey, yo, Indianapolis, if you have ever had a stain on your shirt and didn't know what to do about it, watch this video. You don't have to hire me. I don't want your money. This is how to not hire me. Here's how you get stains out of your video. Peace. Now, what do we do with that video? We take that video and we run ads against people that live in Indianapolis that are between X, you know, 18 and 38 years old, or 38 and 52 years old, and here's how specific this gets, and I, I don't have time to get into the details, but you actually can know things like how much money does, do you make a year? So if you have a high-end laundry service, target people that have a net income of 250K a year, and you can do that on Facebook, but only if you have a professional page, which is why I told you earlier in the conversation, get one tonight. That's crazy, guys. You can know when someone's birthday is. So I can say, yo, my dudes in Indianapolis that are between 30 and 33 years old, this video is for you. I have a birthday surprise. And I target Indianapolis males between 30 and 33 that have a birthday in August. And I run that ad. That's crazy. The reason your Facebook isn't working is because you're taking too long to get to the punchline. Hey, thank you for watching. I love you. Get to it, right? The second thing that, that, that is hurting your Facebook ads is your call to action is not clear enough. So this is why I started by branding and sales. You need to decide before you put out every single piece of content if it's a branding piece or a sales piece and you can't confuse your audience. What do I mean by that? If I said, for my guys that are between 30 and 33 in Indianapolis, right, that have a birthday this month, and then I'm just like, come see us, never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. You have to be much, 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 much more direct. Click below to get your two for one coupon for your birthday and come visit 1212 East 82nd Street in Indianapolis between four and 10 p.m. on Saturday. Bring it in, we'll take care of you. It's gotta be that clear. And if, if, if I'm talking too fast, click below, it'll give you all the details. The click below thing takes, you to, takes them to a page where you're literally giving them the deal. Now, that's different than a brand play. A brand play, I'm not gonna do that to you. I'm not gonna say, yo, if you're between 30 and 33, you live in India and you have a birthday in August, come see us. That's not a brand play, that's a sale. I love sales, I'm a salesman. But when you make a sale, make a sale. The worst thing that you can do for your brand is bury a sale as a brand play. Meaning, I care so much about you guys. I love you guys, thank you for coming. Two for one sale. No, the mayor's interview is a brand play. You're not saying, come buy from us. You're saying, here's why crime is low in our area, and here's why it's encouraging that we have a mayor that will continue to make sure crime is low, and people will come and buy from you. 99.9% .9 of my content using this exact same model that I just told you guys is 100% free. I get messages weekly, if not monthly, and people are like, dude, what can I buy from you? Because they've been, they've, they've been given so much value that they're like, I, I, I have to buy something from him. That's the future. That's what I call pull marketing. We all want to become pull marketers, meaning we've, become, we've done such a good job bringing value to our community, actually caring about them, that they come to us instead of shoving it down their throats that we have a two for one sale. Does that make sense? So Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, I want, I want to leave you with those two thoughts because you should go home and figure out how can I run 10 
spend 10 to 20 hours thinking about how can I run Facebook and Instagram marketing for my small business or for my medium sized business or for my large business, thinking about what you're selling, if the content you're creating is video or sales and who you're selling to, and then you can run ads. And it is remarkable how well that strategy will work out for you guys. So I want to take, I want to take time for questions. We have a mic stand here. Anyone that wants to jump up, um, jump up now. I'd love to hear. We have one coming up. Cool. And guys, also, I, I'd urge you to hang tight for this part. We have like 10 minutes left because even if you don't think you have something of the same question, you probably have the same question. So tell me your name. Brandon Stokely. Hey, Brandon. Nice to meet you. You as well. Thank you for coming out. Um, so you talked about doing a full-length video, the 12, 12 minutes on Facebook. Yes. And that, that does well. Yes. I've heard like shorter three to five minute lengths. So is the question which one does better? Yes. Yeah. So it's a great question. And what I'd say is this. The first thing to think about is when was the last time that you went to a movie? A week ago. And did you stay for the whole movie? Yes. How long was it? When was the last time that you watched an Instagram video and turned it off after about four seconds? Like this morning, right? So we, the timing thing, everybody wants to know the exact time. The answer is, as long as the content is good, people will watch it. I watch a two hour movie, but I won't watch more than three seconds of someone's Instagram story because I'm not into it, but I'm into the movie. So the answer is both. What I would do is, if, if you're just now starting to build a community, I would literally ask them, I'd build that list of people. By the way, the lists that you guys all have are awesome because you can start sending them content you're creating about the community, don't hire me, etc. And then what I would do is I'd say, I, I do a few of both. I do five three minute videos, I do five 18 minute videos, I'd send them all over the course of six weeks or 10 weeks or 12 weeks, and then in month three, I just write an email or a call and be like, just checking in, which do you prefer, long or short? And then let your audience tell you. It's a great question because it gets to the heart of, most of us just assume we know what everybody wants. It's the biggest mistake that we can make. When you're building a, a client services business, which you have, the best thing about that is you get to interact with the people. When they come into your shop, I'd be giving them a card with my new YouTube show, and I'd have them share it with everyone. And then what I would do is I'd say, who else should we have on the show? I'd literally turn the whole neighborhood into a big community of people talking about my show. I would, if I was a dry cleaner in Indianapolis, for example, there would be no other dry cleaners in business around me. I would put them all out of business because I would do so much of this, which no one is doing. So play with both, talk to your audience, and then see. As much as you possibly can. Good question again. Most people are like, but my audience is gonna get tired of me. Let me tell you something. Your audience is not seeing hardly anything. The organic reach on Facebook and Instagram is one, on Facebook is between one and three percent of your audience. So if you put out 18 pieces of content a day, you're still not even getting close to hitting all of your audience. And you're not gonna put out 18 pieces of content a day. What I would say is as much as you can, as sustainably as you can. This is the place that people get mess up. People will do like 18 posts in the first week and they don't put anything else for the next three months because they're so exhausted. If it's once a week, it's once a week. But if you can do that for six months, I'd much rather have you put once a week for six months than 18 times in a week and then nothing again for three more months. Consistency. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Hello. Um, my name's Natalie. I'm from LA, Los Angeles, California. So long way from home. So my question is, um, so you're obviously familiar with the marketing funnel. That's something that people use a lot in digital media. Um, would you say, so you kind of have the branding and then you say sales. What, something that I've always wondered is what are your thoughts on kind of like the mid funnel, um, you know, once you kind of introduce yourself with some long like kind of branding, intro introductory content, how do you kind of get them down further do you have any ideas there? It's a good question. You care more than anyone else. So the, 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 the biggest problem with technology right now is people think that it's a quick solution to replace human interaction. That's a, the wrong strategy. You need the human interaction. The human interaction is we all crave that. So to get them into your funnel is great if you've provided them value. 
right, which I'm assuming you're doing, and if, and if you're starting to think, I want to turn them into a sale, which is great because you need to sell things to be in business, I love sales, you need to basically do what I just suggested to Brandon, which is talk to your people. Like, we're doing all this free content for you. What do you like? What do you not like? What else would you buy? What else would you not want? Like, does it bring, does it bring more confidence? Does it bring, is it more likely that you'll come visit us because of this content? What else would you like to see? So you'd say like community engagement um, would be kind of like that middle. Totally. Community engagement and I would run campaigns and I would see what works. Like if, if you want to do four weeks of free content and then you make a sale with that list that you've created, do that, then do eight weeks and make a sale, then do one day and make a sale and see which one does better. And that's the beauty of you knowing your own marketing because when we know our own marketing, we are completely empowered to know like that's not working, that's not working, that's working. Let's spend 18 times more of our marketing dollars on that one day campaign instead of the eight week campaign that no one's converting on. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Hi, I'm Mark from Fresno, California. Um, California. So uh, what, what is your view on geofencing? I don't know anything about geofencing. Okay. Uh, and, 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 the, the fun thing for me about standing up here, and this is something that I, I train a lot of people when they're doing speaking, and they're like, what if you don't know an answer? I'm like, you say you don't know the answer. Like, I don't know anything about geofencing. So, I, but I think that I'm sure there's someone else here that does, and Brian is probably a good guy to talk to about that. I wish I could be more helpful. Hi, Brian. Chris from Connecticut. Just a simple question. What do you mean by a professional Facebook page? So, there, so we have a, there's a personal Facebook page, which is probably what you have right now, and then there's a public figure page. And it's, it's a separate page that you open up as a business account. So if you just type in like, how can I create a business Facebook page? There will be 5,000 articles. Dude, you're killing it. So how, how many of your story posts are sponsored versus organic? Okay, so good question. So what, tell me your name? Paul. So what Paul is, where are you from? California as well? Louisiana. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> so, sponsored is another way of, like, you know how you guys have swiped and you've seen sponsored ad, that's like, someone's paying to get in front of you, so you're like the 32-year-old guy in Indianapolis that makes $100,000. It depends, so currently I'm at like about a 20% at, like 20% of my posts are sponsored. The organic reach, and this is an important question, the organic reach on these platforms is extremely low and that's intentional. And the reason that that's intentional is because the Facebook and Instagram make money when you pay for advertising, right? So what they did really successfully was they got everybody addicted to their platform, right? They like put the best minds in the world together to figure out how can we make these as, addi as addicting as possible for everybody to use. And they did that through a fairly high organic reach and then they took it away. And when you're addicted to something and someone takes it away, you don't stop using it. You just find out ways to use it more. And their way of using it more in this way is paid advertising. So it depends on what you want. You know, I'll put up some posts. We'll, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll do a story about um, a conference, and I'll, I'll put that up. And I won't necessarily run ads against that. But if I do a, a speaking reel, and I use some of those clips from those ads, and then I'll have like a book me now call to action, I will run ads. It just depends on how much money you have. What, what, what do you do? Uh, coin laundry and barbecue joint. So how much of, do you currently run um, ads? The barbecue joint. And how much do you run on, the, on those ads? Um, what, what percentage are you running? Half. Half. And how's it going? Uh, okay. And what, when you say okay, what, what is not going well? Well, it seems like they turned the dial back about six weeks ago. Yeah. It's too much to get, get the same. It, it's true. And, and, and here's, the, here's the interesting thing. And I, I commend you for actually being in it and trying it and tasting it. Uh, no pun intended. Um, the, the thing is this. Ten years ago, to buy the word wine on Google costed way, 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 way less than it costs now. Same thing is going to happen with these social media platforms. Facebook and Instagram, we have three to five to seven years before... What costs me now seven dollars to get in front of a thousand people will cost me eighty-seven dollars to get in front of a thousand people in five years, which is why it's really exciting right now to be a business owner with these tools 
if you know how to use them, which I hope I've explained a little bit. Cool? You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Luis from San Diego. Hey, Luis. Man, a lot of California. So I have a couple of laundromats with uh, different pages, and I was uh, wondering, how do you handle uh, bad press, uh, internet trolls, negative reviews? Not, not, not that's happening to me, you know, I'm asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just negative reviews, one-star reviews, uh, this stuff like, you know, bad parking is something that you can't really control. So there's, there's two things. Thanks for the question. The, the first question is, like, I do think that we've gotten to a place as a society where we look at trolls and we feel bad for them. I don't think anyone's really taking trolls seriously. Like when I see someone, I'll give you an example. I, I have an entrepreneurship competition I launched two years ago. I bring Latino entrepreneurs from Latin America to the US. I invest in their companies and I present them to different, more venture capitalists that I have in my network in the US. And I introduce them to different executives at companies that could help them expand their business. The other day I had a comment that was like, you fucking white colon, you're trying to colonize all of Latin America. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to colonize. I'm like giving you money. I'm like doing the opposite of colon. But I, people would respond to him and be like, what's wrong with you? So I think that when it's a troll, people are like, oh, this guy, I feel bad for you. If it's, if it's legitimate bad press, then you have to just, you have to confront it head on. And I would just be like, guys, last week we had a bad week. We messed up two, sh two big orders. We were supposed to cater for WeWork and we totally got all the tablecloths wrong. We learned, here's what we learned. Here were the three lessons that I learned from my massive mess up at WeWork last week. And it's like, who in this audience would read that and be like, I hate that guy. You know, I think that it's people are human and people recognize that everyone makes mistakes. The worst thing that you can do in all of social media and all of your storytelling is to lie or to pretend to be something that you're not. So that, that's how I quickly answer that. Hey, what's going on guys? We're here uh, at the uh, Queen Show in New Orleans. Kind of a dead audience today, but we're gonna... Hey! Guys, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Have a great day.